My daughter is 23. I'm dad, by the way. A few years ago, my wife, not her mom, took her to get a birth control device and she was always happy with it. Fast forward about a year and she meets a guy, he's 28, online and falls in love. He lives in another state. He lives with his grandma. She quickly started talking about how they both wanted to get married and both wanted kids. About three months before her trip to meet him in person, she told me she'd gotten her device out and switched to the pill because she didn't like it anymore. This raised my eyebrow. So I talked to her, we went over how important it is to take the pill properly every day, and we talked about other options. She was set on the pill. I also went over the cost of children and the amount of work and responsibility babies are with her. Part of my concern here is that her mother admits she stopped taking her pills and intentionally got pregnant so I would marry her. I did and we're divorced now. I also told her that I love my kids and raising them, but I had no interest in raising theirs. I'm enjoying retirement. I have a tween and a pre-tween with my wife. Well, lo and behold, she gets pregnant on her trip. Boyfriend is not financially stable and is in another state, and due to morning sickness, she's been missing a lot of work. Also, she's intent on keeping the baby. So she called last night and asked if she and her boyfriend could come live with me so he could move here and find a job. He doesn't have any significant work history or education and is morbidly obese, which causes him a lot of health problems, so currently he's on disability. So they would save up money and be out before the baby is born. Also, note her mom doesn't have room at her house. I said no. My daughter has a history of not following through on her commitments and I know that she won't actually move out before she has the baby, and probably not for a long while after. She has trouble taking responsibility for herself, and we will likely be the ones dealing with the baby mostly. We currently have a cat she adopted, and didn't want because she wouldn't clean its box, so it went to the bathroom everywhere. On top of that, I don't want this man I don't know, and she barely knows, in my home with my small children. So now he's flying up so they can find a place together. She currently rents a room in a party house. I told her I would help her with the deposit and first month's rent, but if they want to play house and be a happy little family, I wasn't going to fund it, so don't expect me to pay when they can't. Now she's upset with me, her mom has chewed me up one side and down the other for not supporting her. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It seems like she planned this pregnancy and is now seeing the reality of her situation. I think you're correct. If you let them move in, they'll never move out. I'll caution you though, if she moves close to you, be prepared to be expected to be the free childcare. Her boyfriend will most likely not work because then he won't qualify for disability, but I doubt he'll be taking care of the baby either. I think offering a deposit and the first month's rent is a generous compromise. Very generous. She thinks she's adult enough to have a baby with this guy. She can find a way to pay her bills with the stranger danger. Asking for her and stranger danger to move in is a total low. Her mom should step up and offer the couch since she's complaining about the compromise. Should make it the baby gift though. Yes, mom can take them in, pay for two eating adults and take care of the baby. In addition, your kids, your current wife and the cat, don't need a morbidly obese unemployed stranger and unemployed pregnant woman disrupting your peace. What exactly did she see in this guy? What on earth could he have offered her in life that she would decide to get off birth control and have his baby? It sounds like she purposely got pregnant to start a life with a loser. She's very irresponsible. You're right, it's best you don't enable her because you'll end up raising their child and supporting a stranger who shouldn't even be in your home and her forever. It's going to be a rude awakening for her to discover what it's like to run your household while raising a baby and the father is on benefits. But she chose this. She chose this. My daughter's preschool hired a new teacher and teacher's aide, early 20s female, earlier this year. My daughter adores this teacher and my wife, who is also a teacher, speaks highly of her. However, we just had a baby, so I've been taking care of drop-off and pick-up lately, and I've been able to form my own opinion of this teacher. In my opinion, she messes with the kids too much. These are all the examples that I've seen. We got every teacher a box of chocolates for Christmas from a small shop near the school. The shop wrapped the boxes and they had the shop's name on the wrapping paper, so everyone knows what it is by looking at it. My daughter yelled, we got you chocolate, and the teacher said, Abby, it was supposed to be a surprise. She still hugged my daughter and thanked her, but I felt the remark was unnecessary. Another time, I picked my daughter up towards the end of snack time. My daughter came up to the teacher and asked for more snacks. The teacher said, 
Abby, you already ate all of our snacks. If I give you more, we won't have anything to eat tomorrow. You're about to go home and have dinner anyways. In my opinion, the first two sentences were very unnecessary. This last one just happened on Friday. Pickup ends at 4.30 and I'm guessing the teacher leaves at 4.45. I called the school and said I was going to be late for pickup and I got there at around 4.45. When I got there, my daughter was with a little boy whose parents had been there for 20 minutes but he was refusing to leave. My daughter was getting her stuff and I saw the teacher give the boy a spray bottle, a rag and gloves and say, Jack, if you want to stay, you're going to have to clean the tables and then vacuum. I have to go home and your mom can't wait forever. She went to the closet, got her stuff and started walking to the door. His mom also started to walk away. The little boy dropped the cleaning supplies, started crying and ran for his mom when the teacher reached the door and his mom was out of sight. In my opinion, there had to have been a better way to get him to go than scaring the crap out of him. I get that she's joking, but these kids are preschoolers and don't get it. My daughter has never admitted to this teacher making her upset, but I still don't like how she talks to my daughter or the other kids. My wife and I were talking about the school and I said that I wanted to talk to the teacher about being nicer to my daughter and the other kids. My wife rolled her eyes at me and said that I'm starting to sound like a certain parent at her school that she and the other teachers can't stand and that if I insist that everyone coddles our daughter, then she's going to have a hard time when she's older. Am I the idiot for not liking the teacher and wanting her to be nicer? Wow, so this teacher, an expert childcare provider, is helping guide children to be good little humans who have empathy towards others, making sure to save snacks for everyone else for the next day, and be helpful. What a monster! Tell me you have yet to learn how to parent and age-appropriately guide your own child without telling me you don't know how to parent and guide your own child. I'd say you are the idiot, but you probably asked me to be nicer about it. You are the idiot, man, and it's clear that your wife does the bulk of the childcare. You wouldn't even know anything about this teacher if your wife hadn't been occupied with the birth of your new baby. Why don't you stop and think about that for a while? Really, this teacher sounds wonderful. I just can't believe people with real jobs and families can find the time to make mountains out of these tiny molehills. OP, you need some serious self-reflection on why this is an issue for you. Heaven forbid a teacher use age-appropriate logic and explain consequences to your child. And I thought I was an overprotective parent. Jeez. Two of my children still live with me at home. Neither one decided to go to college and both have crappy minimum wage jobs. They have an inheritance from their grandparents that they will get when they're 25. It's enough to live off if you live frugally for your entire life, but it seems like a lot of money. Their older sister had just moved out after graduating from college. She did the grocery shopping and cooking for the house. I gave her money and she took care of it. I tried this with the middle kid the first week after his sister moved out. He and his brother spent all the money on delivery in two days. I didn't give them more money, so they had to spend their own. They were angry. So now I buy the basics. Pasta, bread, eggs, cheese, that sort of thing. And I only cook for myself. My ex-wife, my daughter and I have all tried to teach them to cook. They refuse. So they've had to cut back on their expenses because I won't buy ready-to-eat meals, delivery or food prep. My ex moved to Wisconsin and my kids know better than to say they want to go live with her. They like Texas winters just fine after experiencing just one up north. They talked to me the other day about food again. They said I'm being cheap by not providing them with better food options. It was Saturday, so I went into the fridge and pulled out some chicken thighs I'd been defrosting. In an hour, I had butter chicken and broccoli with bread for our lunch. I told them that I wasn't going to make any changes to how things ran in my house. I told them all they had to do was go to college and I would cover their meal plan. Nope, they liked their lives other than the food situation. My mom called me today and said I was mean to her poor babies. I offered to send them to live with her. She politely declined and dropped it. I do this with everyone who contacts me on their behalf, and then I tell them how it went. They don't understand why no one wants them to come live with them. I think I raised two stupid kids. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. I thought you were depriving small kids of food and was ready to blast you. You seem to describe two young adults who have graduated from high school and failed to launch. They are running out the clock on the inheritance. Yeah, they can learn to cook or eat ramen then. My mom called me today and said I was mean to her poor babies, so I offered to send them to live with her. She politely declined and dropped it. I'm sorry, but this made me chuckle. 
OP, keep doing what you're doing. Your children having jobs means they're at least 16, I'm assuming, so they should be learning to cook for themselves. Keep giving the same people trying to pressure you to cave in the same offer you provided above. You are the idiot. It sounds like it's time to give your kids the get a job and or get out speech. You are only making them worse by letting them live with you. There is no incentive for them to grow up into mature human beings if you keep letting them live with you. You've raised some mooches who better learn how to earn their own money and survive as adults before they get inheritance money. They'll likely blow through it in record time and then expect to return to mooching. Obviously, you created this situation as the parent. Yeah, he's an idiot. I'm having a hard time not reading into the fact that the eldest daughter knows how to take care of herself and the two sons don't. Tale as old as time. The eldest daughter is taught life skills and expected to put them to use for the good of the household. What were the boys being expected to do that entire time? They were coddled and taught a woman would do it for them. Way to go, parents. OP obviously needs to keep trying to correct it, but I think they messed up with their boys and that's on them. I, 37 female, am married to my husband, 38, and we have a daughter together, tween. My daughter is very small for her age and sometimes gets treated like a younger child. She loves to hop in my or my husband's lap and cuddle with us on the couch or in a chair. I have thought that she may be too old for that sort of thing and maybe I'm hurting her by letting her continue. Yesterday, she tried to hop in my lap and cuddle and I told her she was too old for that and to get off me. She got really upset, got off me and went to her room and slammed the door. She hasn't tried to get in my lap since then and things are tense between us. She doesn't talk to me unless she has to, and when I hugged her goodnight last night, she didn't hug me back. I feel really guilty because I obviously hurt her feelings, but I feel like she might be too old to sit on my lap. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. She's not going to want to cuddle you much longer, so you maybe have a year left, and you're throwing that time away instead of cherishing it. Now she doesn't feel like or isn't comfortable hugging her own parents. What a terrible shame and sad thing to do to your own child, OP. Yeah, she no longer has a year left. It's over. OP, you handled that terribly. You made her feel like she'd done something wrong. Many people sit on their parents' lap at all ages. I've seen full-grown adults do it. She's a child. No wonder she's upset with you. How did you tell her? Did you literally say, you're too old, get off me? If you literally told her to get off with no warning, it's no wonder why she perceived that as rejection and is now completely confused as to what sort of physical affection is okay or will get her snapped at. OP, there is no age limit for parental affection. I'll start holding her when I'm too big for my mom's lap. My 16-year-old still curls up for snuggles. I'm 35 and my sister is 38. We still jokingly will get in my mom's lap and cuddle. What the heck, OP? Your kid obviously loves you, shows love through cuddling up with you guys, and feels comfortable. What you did by saying this basically makes her feel embarrassed and bad about showing you guys love. Yikes, you should feel guilty. My wife and I had our first child a few months ago. My sister lives two hours away and has seen my daughter once. My wife, kid, and I made plans to travel the two hours to visit my sister, I thought this would be a good opportunity for my sister to visit with my daughter and we go out to eat. My sister has three dogs, who are her world and have free reign at her place, much to my chagrin at times. They are allowed on the couch, in the kitchen and everywhere. I visited her and not sat on the couch because I don't want dog hair on me. We've had family vacations where she brought her dogs. Everything had to be dog friendly or centric and I didn't enjoy that trip. I've passed on future vacations. There was no point in trying to talk her out of bringing them, plus I didn't want to spend my vacation with her dogs. When we arrived, I knocked, heard the barking, and told my wife to hold off bringing my daughter inside until I knew the dogs were in another room. Sister opens the door, greets me, and says, come inside. I asked whether she minded putting the dogs in another room. She pauses, goes, absolutely not, and looks baffled that I'd even request that. I told her that I wasn't ready for my daughter to be around three dogs. It's only for about an hour, then we're going to lunch. After a bit of back and forth, she obviously won't put the dogs away. I just say, all right, I'm going to head home. I help my wife put my daughter in the car and start to leave. The whole time, my sister was flipping out, saying, what the heck? She says she didn't even get to see her niece, says I'm an idiot, etc. 
So after five minutes at my sister's house, we drove the two hours back home. I had two dozen texts and phone calls from her that I didn't acknowledge. So was I the idiot in this situation? You are the idiot. Why would you go to your sister's house if you don't like dogs? Of course the dogs have the run of the place. It's their place, not yours. Sure, your sister could have been more accommodating, but she didn't have to, and now you're ignoring her after you were so rude to her. It sounds as though your sister considers her dogs to be family. She clearly loves them and treats them well. She wants them to be comfortable in their home. That's their business and their home. You're absolutely allowed not to like dogs and not to want to be around them, but you don't get to dictate what someone does in their home. You get to do things however you want in your home just as your sister gets to in her home. You are the idiot. Disagree. An infant's immune system is not developed. I can see him not wanting to bring a newborn into a hotbed of allergens. Also, a bit unsafe to introduce a newborn baby to three unfamiliar dogs with no newborn experience at all. I grew up with dogs and whenever someone came over, baby or no baby, we put them in the yard, in the front room, or in one of the bedrooms until everyone was situated and comfortable with the dogs being introduced to the situation. What I don't understand is why OP never mentioned this to his sister before the two-hour drive to her place, or just went ahead and met her for lunch at a safer place instead. If I were his wife, I'd be livid about the whole damn mess. So clearly, everyone's the idiot here. Yeah, what the heck is going on here? OP made a mistake by not sorting this out ahead of time, but the sister had a chance to see her niece and declined. I love dogs and cats and pigs and goats, but animals are dangerous. Being a parent is scary and it doesn't sound like OP had reason to believe these animals had any history with infants. It sounds like both sides were wrong and there's some history here. Hopefully, being siblings is important enough for them to reconcile soon.